Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 2, Lesson 2, Roots. After this lesson, you need to be able to find square and cube roots, and use square and cube roots to solve equations involving perfect squares and cubes. Let's learn square roots. So a square root of a number is one of its two equal factors. So if you have x squared equals y, that means x is the square root of y, since x times the same number, x again, equals y. So for example, if you have 5 to the second power equals 25, 5 would be the square root of 25 since 5 times 5 is 25. It's that equal factor that you multiply to get to the perfect square. A perfect square is a rational number whose square root is a whole number. So complete the table for the following perfect squares. So our perfect square is 1 since 1 times 1 is 1. The perfect square is 4 since 2 times 2 is 4. The perfect square is 9 since 3 times 3 is 9. 16 is made by 4 times 4, so if we have a perfect square of 25, that means the root would have to be 5, since 5 times 5 is 25. 36, the square root of 36 would be 6, the square root of 49 would be 7, and the square root of 64 would be 8, since 8 times 8 is 64. Every positive number has both a positive and negative square root. So since 3 times 3 is 9, 3 is the square root of 9. But since negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9, negative 3 is also a square root of 9. So 9 has two square roots, positive 3 and negative 3. In most real-world situations, you're only really going to use the positive or what's called the principal square root, and that's just going to be indicated by this radical sign. It looks kind of like division or a check mark, kind of combined together. That is used to indicate the principal or positive square root. When both the positive and the negative are asked for, you will see a plus and minus symbol before the radical sign, indicating that it wants the positive and the negative versions. So here we have just the square root of 25. There's no sign out front, so it just wants the positive, which is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Next, we have negative square root of 25. So this one's asking for the negative answer, so negative 5. And last, we can see our plus or minus symbol. So we need to have that plus or minus symbol in our answer. The square root of 25, again, is 5. So here would be plus or minus 5 to show both answers. Example 1. Find positive square roots. Simplify the square root of 64. So in order to simplify the square root of 64, we need to figure out what number multiplied by itself is equal to 64. Sometimes it's going to be helpful to list out the factors of that number. So the factors of 64 would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. Remember, factors are just numbers that are multiplied together to get your product. So 1 and 64 multiplied together would give me 64. 2 and 32, 4 and 16. 8 is our number that's multiplied by itself to get 64. So the square root of 64 would be 8, since 8 times 8 is 64. Sometimes listing out the factors will be helpful. Other times it might just be quicker, or you might realize right off the top of your head what number multiplied by itself will give you the number that you need. Use whatever way works best for you. Check your understanding. Simplify the square root of 225. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said 15, since 15 times 15 is 225. And again, we only need the positive answer here, since it's just giving us our principal root symbol. Example 2. Find both square roots. Simplify plus or minus the square root of 1.21. So here we're going to do the square root of a decimal. It follows the same pattern. Square roots mean what number times the same number gives you what's inside. So we need to think what number times itself is 1.21. Since there's an even number of decimal places, that means that we can do this. If there's an odd number of decimal places, the square root is not going to be a perfect square, so you're going to need a calculator for it. But since there's an even number, we can do it using numbers that we're familiar with. So 1.21 looks a lot like the perfect square of 121. When we do the square root of 121, that's 11, since 11 times 11 is 121. Now, using that, we need to figure out where to put decimal point into 11 so that we can come up with 1.21. Here, there's only two options. We can either put it before both digits, so we'd have 0 0.11, or we can put it between the two digits and get 1.1. If we put it at the end, we would still just have 11, so that didn't do anything. Because the number we're trying to get to, 1.21, has two decimal places, that means that when we multiply, we have to have two decimal places all together in the problem. 
we're going to want to split that evenly amongst both numbers. If we were to multiply 0 0.11 times 0 0.11, that would have four decimal places. One, two, three, four. Not what we want. We only want two. So we need to make it have two by doing 1.1 times 1.1. So the square root of 1.21 would be 1.1. And then since it wanted both the positive and negative, we put our plus or minus symbol out front. Check your understanding. Simplify plus or minus the square root of 1.44. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got plus or minus 1.2. So I want the number inside. I know that 12 squared is equal to 144. So if I figure out where to place my decimal to get 1.44, I need two decimal places. So that means in 12 times 12, I need two decimal places. Split it evenly, so 1.2 times 1.2. There's my value, and then I wanted the plus or minus, so I stick it out front. Plus or minus 1.2. Example three, find negative square roots. Simplify negative square root of 25 over 36. We're gonna just find the square root of the fraction inside and then add the negative sign to our answer at the end. When you're doing the square root of a fraction, Really, you're just doing the square root of the top dividing by the square root of the bottom. So the square root of 25 would be 5, and the square root of 36 would be 6, since 5 times 5 is 25, and 6 times 6 is 36. That's our square root, and then we just need to add the negative sign out front here, so our square root of this fraction would be negative 5 6. Check your understanding. Simplify negative square root of 49 over 64. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said negative 7 eighths. So again, the top, the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 64 is 8. So there's your 7 eighths, and then stick the negative out front. Negative 7 eighths. Example 4, square roots of negative numbers. Simplify the square root of negative 16 using rational numbers if the expression cannot be simplified, explain why. So for this problem, it's slightly different than the last time. The negative is under the square root, meaning we're trying to take the square root of that negative number, not just making our answer negative. In order to simplify the square root of negative 16, we have to determine what number multiplied by that same number equals negative 16. Well, I know that four times four is positive 16. Negative four times negative four is also positive 16. If I tried to do negative four times positive four to get my negative 16, those are no longer the same number, so it's not gonna work. There's no rational number for the square root of 16 because there's no number multiplied by itself to get to negative 16. We had to use two different numbers in order to do it. So square root of negative 16 cannot be simplified and it has no rational number solution. So we could say it has no solution. This is gonna be the case for any time you are trying to take the square root of a negative number. Check your understanding. Simplify the square root of negative 81 using rational numbers. If this expression cannot be simplified, explain why. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. Just like the last example, it cannot be simplified. There's no numbers that multiplied by itself will give you negative 81. We could do in positive nine and negative nine, but they're not the same number. Let's learn. Use square roots to solve equations. You can solve equations using inverse operations. They undo each other. So like subtracting undoes addition, multiplication is the opposite of division. Doing a number to the second power, so squaring a number, and taking the square root, those are inverse operations. They undo each other. So the square, nine squared, is 81. If we wanna go backwards to undo that, we could take the square root and get back to nine. They are opposites and help go from one to the other. If we're using it to solve equations, so let's say I wanted to solve for x, and I see it's x squared, I would take the square root of that to both sides so I can solve for x. So here I can see once I take the square root of x squared and the square root of p, I end up with x by itself is equal to the square root of p. When you do that, because it did not tell you and you don't know if it's the positive or the negative, we are going to assume that it could be either. There's going to be that plus or minus symbol to show that there could be two answers. Example five, use square roots to solve equations. Solve t squared equals 169. Check your solution. So we have t squared equals 169. So we're gonna take the square root of both sides to get t by itself. 
What number times itself equals 169? That must be 13. So we put that plus or minus symbol. T could be positive 13 or negative 13. So our solutions here would be both positive 13 and negative 13. Check your understanding. Solve y squared equals 256. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said y was equal to positive or negative 16, since 16 times 16 is 256. Let's learn. Cube roots. So a cube root is a number that's one of its three equal factors. When we're doing this with a cube root, we need to think what number times the same number times the same number a third time gives us the value underneath the radical sign. So, for example, since 2 to the third power equals 8, right? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8. That would mean 2 is the cube root of 8. And since negative 6 to the third power is negative 2 16, that means negative 6 would be the cube root of negative 2 16. Notice here, even in our explanation, we're able to do the cube root of a negative number, unlike the square root. And we'll look at that in just a minute. For cube roots, every integer, meaning both positive and negative number, have exactly one cube root. So where every positive number had two square roots, every integer can only have one cube root. So if we're looking at this in our table, we can see the cube root of a positive number will be a positive number. What number times the same number times the same number equals 27? That must be 3. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 125 would be 5 times 5 times 5. So the cube root of 125 would be 5. If we did 0, we would get 0. And then down here at the bottom, we have our negatives. So up here, if we did negative 3 times negative 3, we would get positive 9. But if we did positive 9 times negative 3, we are back to negative 27. So this cube root of a negative number is going to be the negative answer. So negative 27 cube root would be negative 3, and then the cube root of negative 125 would be negative 5. So notice positive was positive, negative was negative. They each only have one answer. A perfect cube, just like a perfect square, is a number that's the cube of an integer, so to the third power. So if we had 1 times 1 times 1, we'd get 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, we'd get negative 1. 2 times 2 times 2 would get 8. And negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, we would get negative 8. So what times what times what is 27? 3. How would we get negative 27? We would multiply negative 3 three times. 4 times 4 times 4 would be 64. And negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 would be negative 64. So again, one of the main differences between square roots and cube roots, square roots had two answers when we took the square root of a positive number. Cube roots only have one value for the root, and it's the same sign as its perfect cube. Take a minute to pause and reflect and compare and contrast square roots and cube roots. Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Example six, cube roots of positive numbers. Simplify the cube root of 125. So in order to do that, we have to figure out what number multiplied by the same number by the same number is equal to 125. That must be five. Five times five is 25, times five again is 125. So the cube root of 125 would be 5. Check your understanding. Simplify the cube root of 216. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said 6. This number inside is positive, so your answer should be positive. 6 times 6 is 36. Times 6 again, a third time, we would end up with... 6 times 6 would be 36, 6 times 30 would be 180, and we end up with 216. Example 7, cube roots of negative numbers. Simplify the cube root of negative 27. So same thing here, what number times the same number times the same number gives us negative 27. Now, you might be tempted to be like, hey, there's no solution, it's the root of a negative number. Again, that's for square roots. Cube roots just means your answer will be negative. So negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 would give us negative 27, meaning the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Check your understanding. Simplify the cube root of negative 1,000. Pause the video and complete this check. Check your answer. 
you should have got negative 10. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, and it's negative inside, so it needs to be negative in our answer. Example 8. Use cube roots to solve equations. Dylan has a planter in the shape of a cube that holds 15.625, or 125 over 8, cubic feet of potting soil. Solve the equation s cubed equals 125 eighths to find the side length of the container. Check your solution. So we have a cube here. If I were to draw it out, cube is our three dimension. We want the cube root, meaning we want the side of a cube. It's saying that it holds this amount, meaning that's the volume. The volume of a cube, meaning we have the side cubed, which is where they get this from. They're pretty much just saying the volume is this. And we want to know the side length. So when we want to solve something to the third power, just like when we wanted to solve something to the second power, we used a square root. When we want to solve something to the third power, we're going to use a cube root to undo it. Those are your inverse operations. So we're going to take the cube root of each side. So to do that, just like with square roots, really you're doing just the cube root of the top and the cube root of the bottom. So what times what times what is 125? That must be five. What times what times what is eight? That would be two. So we end up with 5 on top and 2 on the bottom. So we can write our answer as 5 over 2, or as a mixed number, we could say 2 and a half. So each side would be 2 and a half, and it's talking about feet, so we really should have a unit here. 2 and a half feet would be the side length of this cube. Let's check our solution. So we know we got 5 over 2 as our side. Let's use the improper fraction instead of the mixed number, or we're just going to have to turn the mixed number into an improper fraction anyway. So we know that the side, s, we thought was 5 over 2, so let's plug that in for s and multiply it back out to see if we get the volume that we thought to start with. So if we plug it back in, remember our properties of exponents, we have a power, so we can kind of distribute that exponent to both the top and the bottom. So 5 to the third power, does that equal 125? Yep. 2 to the third power, does that equal 8? Yes. So 125 over 8 is what we got plugging it back in. That is what we started with, so we're verifying that we did it correctly. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and solve for the side of the box. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said 8 thirds or 2 and 2 thirds. If we're doing this right, we're just doing the cube root of both sides. So the cube root of 512, this one's a little tricky to figure out. What number times the same number times the same number is 512? That must be 8. And then on the bottom, this one's a little quicker to figure out. What number times the same number times the same number is 27? That would be 3. And then we can change it to a mixed number. 3 goes into 8 twice with 2 left over, so 2 and 2 thirds. As you're going through all these problems, it'll be helpful to memorize the perfect squares and the square roots that's paired with it up to probably about 20, and the cube roots and perfect cubes up to about a thousand, meaning up to ten.